Good evening. Tonight, when asked about the fact that more than 200,000 people in this country have died of COVID on his watch, here's what the president said and did not say about that horrific milestone. Well, I think it's a shame. I think if we didn't do it properly and do it right, you'd have two and a half million deaths. If you take a look at uh, alternatives, you could have two and a half million deaths or something there about, but it's a horrible thing. Should have never, ever happened. China let this happen and just remember that. China let it happen. It's a shame, he said, but it's China's fault, but at least it's not two and a half million dead. And that was it. It's hard to know where to begin with, with all of that. His press secretary said this today. He has said before that it keeps him up at night thinking of even one life lost. Uh, this president has taken this incredibly seriously. That's Kelly McEnany, who promised on camera on her first day on the job to never tell a lie. So taking her at her word, it must follow that her boss, the president, was up all night before and after saying this yesterday. We didn't know it. Now we know it. It affects elderly people, elderly people with heart problems and other problems. If they have other problems, that's what it really affects. That's it. You know, in some states, thousands of people, nobody young, below the age of 18, like nobody. They have a strong immune system. Who knows? You look, you take your hat off to the young because they have a hell of an immune system, but it affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. By the way, open your schools. Everybody open your schools. It affects elderly people, that's it, he says. Among anyone else, it affects virtually nobody, in his words. Virtually nobody. Actually, Mr. President, it has affected and sickened and killed people in every age group, from toddlers to the oldest Americans. We've seen college football players develop heart issues, children get strokes, we've seen people of all ages get sick. It certainly is deadlier to seniors, but anyone can get sick and anyone can pass it on to other people. But even if you believe that it only affects elderly people, as the president said, meaning kills them, are elderly people now disposable in this society? Is, is that the country we now want to live in? If so, the president might want to look in the mirror or a get on a scale because he is elderly and obesity is an underlying condition. The president knows what he said isn't true. He's known it for months. Keep him honest, he himself said so to Bob Woodward back in March. Now it's turning out it's not just old people, Bob. Just today and, and yesterday, some startling facts came out. It's not just old, older yeah, exactly. young people to plenty of young people. It's plenty of young people, he said on March 19th, when just 265 people had died. And perhaps when the president said that, he was maybe trying to impress Bob Woodward with his knowledge or make the accomplishment of tackling the pandemic that much more impressive when it actually happened. Except that victory has not come yet. Because whatever the president's motivations were for saying what he said, he never publicly said or acted on what he knew. And even as the outbreak grew, he kept right on sounding the alarm privately about the virus he said publicly would just magically disappear. This thing is a killer if it gets you. If you're the wrong person, you don't have a chance. Yes, yes, exactly. And like so, a friend of mine died, very uh, great real estate developer from Manhattan. He died yeah, yesterday. I, know. I mean, you know, listen, students of mine, I teach a journalism seminar, have written me, have had it. And uh, one of the women said she had it. They said she was cured, and they kept coming back with, the, with new symptoms. Th strange things happened. She had intense headaches. She but what had, happened? And she she's in agony, and and they're telling her, oh, you're you're cured now, you're over it. So this, this I mean, you've said it. This now is this a monster. This is a scourge, and there's the plague. That was mid-April when about 30,000 Americans had died, and privately, at least, he sounded like he understood the threat for what it was. Again, though, he said nothing at the time that might have honestly alerted the public or done anything to protect them. Said he was tweeting in all caps on April 17th, liberate Minnesota, liberate Michigan, and liberate Virginia. He was tweeting that with 30,000 of his fellow Americans dead and many more dying. Now, with another 170,000 dead since then, 
The president keeps holding rallies like this one tonight in Pittsburgh, flouting social distancing guidelines, mocking people for wearing a mask. And as he does, new cases in this country have started rising again from a baseline that was already too high to begin with, more than 52,000 reported just yesterday. Take a look at the map. New cases up 10 to 50 percent in 16 states, up more than 50 percent in eight, the ones in deep red. They are steady in 20 states and dropping in only six. Yet today, the day more than 200,000 people he took an oath to protect have died, the president again had nothing but praise for the job he's done. I think we've done an amazing job. Uh, they're having a spike in Europe now, as you know, and we're always compared to Europe, and we've done very well compared to Europe. In my opinion, we're rounding the turn. Rounding the turn. He said that yet again. Yet yesterday, he gave himself an A-plus on the job. Talking today with the CNN's Sanjay Gupta, Dr. Anthony Fauci had this response to a viewer question about how he would grade the president. Take a look at the numbers and make up your own mind. I mean, it, it, you know, we don't need a sound bite from me. <laughs> Take a look at the numbers. Dr. Fauci also said this about COVID in younger patients. It isn't just the elderly and those with underlying conditions, because there, it, it can be serious in young people, true people with underlying conditions, but those are not just isolated to the elderly. There are plenty of younger people who have underlying conditions that put them at risk. Again, the president knew this, said so to Bob Woodward back in March, but kept the truth from the public. Dr. Fauci has not. He addressed the death toll today. The idea of 200,000 deaths is really very sobering and, in some respects, stunning. If the president is in any way sobered by the same milestone that has sobered and stunned the nation's most highly regarded expert in the field, he's showing few signs of it. Truly feeling the impact, after all, might mean acknowledging both the terrible scale of it, but also the individuality and unique value of every single life lost. Everything, in short, that makes us all somebody.